What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Colin J, Baby Cypress. We are out here in our garden this morning. We've had some really great weather the last few days, had some rain, we've got some nice cloud cover, and it's just finally nice to be able to come out here and enjoy the garden without like getting all sweaty and sticky mm -hmm. and eaten up by all the little bugs that live out here. Um, so we're out here today, we wanted to show you, you know, kind of the things that are still going on out here in the garden, show you things that are blooming. We made a video of our garden tour a couple of months ago. Since then we've had some things come and go just because we've had some crazy extreme heat, but there are still a lot of things out here thriving that look really good that we didn't show y'all in that video. And then the number one reason we were shooting this video is because, you know, we planted this garden to attract pollinators. And we have a specific area dedicated to monarch, monarch butterflies. Um, most of y'all are probably aware that monarch butterflies are an endangered species. They are a species of butterfly that has been in dramatic decline over the last 20 years, and it is a real possibility that we could lose that species entirely within our lifetime. So it's really important to plant milkweed. We have a huge section here to plant with milkweed, and we've had some monarch butterflies show up, and we actually have some monarch caterpillars out here eating the milkweed plants, which is really exciting. So what we're going to do is we're going to round them up, and we're going to take them into an enclosure to where they can uh, finish out their life cycle in there without the fear of them getting um, predated upon by predators such as wasps, tachinid flies, there are a lot of things that get monarch caterpillars. So we want as many of them to reach adulthood as possible, so that's what we're going to be doing. So if y'all are excited to join along with us on this garden adventure, do us a huge favor, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of these future gardening videos. But with that being said, let's show you guys the garden and let's show you guys these caterpillars that are out here. If you watched our garden video from a couple months ago, we showed you guys this trellis back here, and on it we have Thumbergia and Cypress Vine, and it is completely covered up now. So I think we should definitely pop up a clip of what it looked like a couple months ago. And not only can you see how much this has grown, you can see how much Cypress has grown too. Yeah, I don't even know if y'all can go through the tunnel anymore. You should try to go through it. Okay, let's try. Go to the other side and come all the way through it. Okay. <laughs> While Jay and Cypress are making the way over, here's one of the Cypress vine flowers. We didn't, these guys weren't blooming whenever we showed you guys this thing originally. And then here's the Thumbergia. These things just completely take over everything you let them grow on. Okay, y'all ready? Here we go. Whoa. Coming through. Woo. This is awesome under here. I know, right? Okay. Limbo. <laughs> <laughs> Drop it low, Cypress. <laughs> Was that so much Whoa. fun, buddy? <laughs> these plants are named after you. Yeah. Or were you named after these plants? He said, I was named after a tree, Dad. <laughs> that is really cool. And so awesome to see this thing completely get I covered know. up. I mean, look at this, guys. It's actually got off the trellis and is spreading all along the ground. We don't even know what to do with it. We're just letting it go. <laughs> just trying to keep it off our other plants. <laughs> we love it. I know. Also, love this guy right here too. This thing has grown like better than ever. This is our black and blue salvia plant. And this was actually started just by a tiny little cutting that my mom gave me last year. And it has just gotten humongous. I mean, look at that. It's all over the place too. The hummingbirds are just feasting from this thing day in and day out. It is so nice. Now the best plant that we got going on out here has got to be this one right here. This is Mexican sunflower and there's bees all over it right now. But yeah, that. this is definitely our favorite. Cute little bumblebee butt right there. <laughs> this is, yeah, like Jay said, this is my favorite plant to grow. Ooh. It just grows so vigorously. It has all these beautiful bright orange blooms. The pollinators absolutely love it. And the foliage is always this nice dark green. And then when you touch the stems, it's like velvety soft. It's just really, really nice. I'd say that this is our favorite next yeah. to, well, this is our favorite, and then like zinnias is probably my second favorite, but <laughs> if you look out here, all of our zinnias <laughs> are gone. They did not handle the hot weather that well. Yeah. We watered the heck out of them, and they just didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but the Mexican flowers held up really nicely, and these will definitely provide a great nectar source mm. for all the pollinators into late summer and to fall. Mm. Do you like it, Cypress? Is this your favorite? He said it's really pretty. Oh. You know what else is also really nice? Let me turn around right here. This is probably the last <laughs> big thing we have going on out here. Check this out. These are all lantana plants, and we call this little zone lantana land because it has just taken over. These guys are great. You know, these started off as tiny little plants, like tiny little baby seed, and if you allow them to grow and get some good fertilizer and just good soil, they just grow and just take off and they just cover this whole thing. And this is probably, honestly, like our number one pollinator source right here. They love these guys so much.
One last thing I think that we should show y'all before we get into the Monarch Caterpillars is our big trellis right here. It has completely gotten covered up too, but with mainly with this passion flower. This thing is so crazy. Look at the flower on it, guys. It is just incredible. Look at that. Isn't that the coolest flower you've ever seen? These guys are so cool, and this thing is loaded with them. <laughs> it is so awesome. And then we have these little orange guys right here that we showed y'all in the last video. They're really cool too. They kind of remind me of the Mexican sunflower, but the star of the show over here has got to be these passion flowers. And if you look right here, oh, we missed him. Bees love it too. <laughs> so right here in this raised bed, we have a bunch of different varieties of milkweed plants. We have balloon milkweed, some tropical, some common, some purple, some swamp. We have everything in this bed, along with these crazy uh, lion tails that are not milkweed, <laughs> um, but they just invaded it and we just let them grow. But right here, you can see some of the milkweed plants. You can see these are the seed pods of that balloon milkweed. And you can see where it gets the name balloon milkweed. It's just a big old balloon looking thing. And then if you take a look right here, you can see that we actually have a monarch butterfly caterpillar. Now this was like one of the main inspirations for planting this garden was to attract pollinators, including the monarch butterfly, so we could raise these caterpillars and help them reach adulthood without having too many issues along the way. I'm not sure why he's shaking his head like that. I think I startled him. He's, it must be like a defense mechanism right there. So there's actually quite a few caterpillars out here. I'm gonna go around and we're gonna collect as many as we can, cut down some milkweed, and we're gonna show you guys how we get them set up for success in the rearing tent. Okay, so the game plan is I have this little clear, little sterilite bowl. I'm gonna go around and hand pick these caterpillars off the plant, I'm gonna collect them in here. Then we're gonna go around and cut some pieces of this off and get it set up in a little water jar and put it in the enclosure. So we're gonna start with this big guy right here. And so something that monarch caterpillars do whenever they feel threatened is they will coil up in a little ball like that. Almost like a little roly-poly or an armadillo move. <laughs> so we'll put him in there. There's a big one right here. I'm seeing a bunch of different caterpillars of all different shapes and sizes. There's our second one. They are so cool. Look how tiny this one is. Aww. So honestly, it's best to collect the caterpillars when they're small like this, or even as eggs. If you can see the butterfly lay eggs, that's the best way to get them because um, these guys have a main predator, which is the tachnid fly, and what they do is they parasite, parasitize these caterpillars. They lay eggs on the inside of them, and then the maggots eat the caterpillar from the inside out. It's a horrible situation. Um, so the earlier on you can collect the caterpillars, the better. So we got these three. I saw a bunch right over here. Oh, and I actually see one of those tachnid flies right here. Uh -oh. That's not good. It's not good. Hopefully he hasn't been out here causing trouble. We've got a lot of milkweed out here and a lot of places for these caterpillars to hide. So if this is your first time seeing or learning about monarch caterpillars, they are very easy to recognize. Um, you can see they have those bold yellow, white, and black alternating bands on their body. And then at both end of the ends of their body, you can see they have those black antenna-like structures. Um, these bright colors are actually a form of defense, it's called aposematic coloration, and it alerts potential predators that these guys could be distasteful or poisonous and cause harm to them if they eat them. And in most cases it works, but like we've mentioned a few times, um, their main predators are wasps and tachinid flies, and they really just don't care about how bad they taste and they will still go after them. But that is a very nice specimen right there. We're going to collect him and add him to our collection of caterpillars and uh, add them to the tent. Take a look at that right there guys, we've got a monarch butterfly in the garden eating on the Mexican sunflower. We told you that they loved it. Look at that. Oh, it's up there now. That looks like a female. Yeah, it's definitely a female. She's probably out here to lay some eggs. That is so awesome. I'll have to keep an eye on her. And if we see her lay some eggs, we'll have to collect them. Oh, there she goes. Look at that, guys. That is a monarch laying eggs on the milkweed. This couldn't happen at a better time. He's also getting really heavy. <laughs> He's an 18 pound boy now. Yeah, we just <laughs> found out yesterday he weighs 18 pounds. That's so crazy. He's like in the 85th percentile for like weight and height. Yeah. <laughs> He's a big guy. <laughs> but anyways, for demonstration purposes, this is enough caterpillars to collect to show you guys how we're gonna set them up. Look at that, they're like already pooping in there too. Yeah, 
Like how many is that? Three, six, seven, eight? Yeah, eight's plenty to show you guys how this works out, but we'll come back out here and collect the rest of them and the eggs as well. So all we have to do now is collect some milkweed for them to eat and then put them in the enclosure. Got our little pruning shears. We're gonna take a piece off of this one right here. This is a big plant. It can definitely spare to lose some leaves. Look at all that milkweed right wow. there. That should feed those guys for about a day. <laughs> those guys munch this stuff down, especially whenever they get big. And because of that, I'm going ahead and get two of these big old branches. Just to save us some time. That ought to be good. And there's probably, look at that, there's also an egg on there. I'm not sure if you can be able to see that, but there's actually a monarch butterfly egg. Oh yeah. Right there, do you see that? Yeah. Look at that. Two for one special. We got yeah. eggs and we got milkweed. Let's go put those caterpillars in the tent before they try to crawl out of that container. All right, so right here behind me, we have the enclosure where we're going to be raising these monarch caterpillars. Um, it's a fully mesh enclosure. It's 100% breathable. On this side, it has a little viewing window so we can watch the caterpillars carry about their day, eat the milkweed, and then eventually watch them transform from caterpillars into adult monarchs. Now, the reason why we raise them in here is, like we stated, is to keep the caterpillars safe from predators. Um, in the wild, I would say probably only like 10% of the caterpillars um, reach adulthood. So whenever you raise them this way, you greatly increase um, that survival to adulthood. So what we're going to do, we're going to take our milkweed here and we're going to put it in a cup of water and then insert the caterpillars into the tent. And then we will just keep an eye on them for the next, you know, these guys will probably have about another week, week and a half maybe before they transform into the chrysalis. And then hopefully we'll see some monarch butterflies emerge in the next couple of weeks. Take a look at what I just spotted right here hanging on this fence. This is actually a monarch butterfly chrysalis. And this is a guy that we were unfortunately not able to get to um, before we got to this state. But it looks like he's doing okay. Doesn't look like he has any issues with him, but that is just beautiful. Look at that. Just that jade green, and there's that kind of gold little rim at the top. Just a beautiful little chrysalis. We're gonna let this guy hang out right here. It's right here by the porch where we're keeping um, the rest of our caterpillars. So we'll keep an eye on this guy and see if he makes it out as an adult. But either way, what an awesome little find. Guys, if you take a look into the middle of your screen, you can see that white speck right there. That is a monarch butterfly egg. And there is a great chance that that guy is going to make it all the way to adulthood because he's going to live his whole life inside of this protected enclosure. But now we've got a whole glass here of caterpillars that are ready to go inside the enclosure. Ready to put them in? Ready. All right. Okay, let's put you back in here. There you're he gonna, goes. You're going to do big things, buddy. Big things. Now that's a pretty big one. He's probably yeah. in his fourth instar. I think they have five instars total. Um, so he'll probably change to a chrysalis pretty soon. Grab hold. There you go. There we go. Here's the little guy. Is that the last one? That's the last one. Last one. Is he going to grab a hold of it? There he goes. There he goes. Nice. Sometimes it takes him a second to untuck their little, their little balls. <laughs> nice. That's eight or nine. I don't remember how many it was. Eight or nine happy <laughs> caterpillars in the tent. And we have a bunch more out there we need to collect. But, yeah, we'll collect more later. But that's good for now. Heck yeah. All right, well, that is going to wrap up today's episode. We hope that y'all enjoy going out in the garden with us and helping us collect those monarch caterpillars today. We will definitely be keeping y'all updated with the progression of their maturity inside of the tent. And uh, we look forward to showing you guys that day whenever they do turn into adult monarchs because it's going to be really, really cool. They're gonna be super beautiful. But guys, if y'all enjoyed today's episode, do us a huge favor, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our future outdoor adventures. We're, We're Colin, Colin J and Baby C, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Bye guys. <gasps>